Yes, let's talk about hockey, a show that journeys through the history of the sport of ice hockey from its disputed origins to the game we see today. Though the Ottawa Senators of the NHL that we know today have never won a Stanley Cup title, they still have Stanley Cup banners hanging from the rafters of their home arena. The reason for this is that the Senators team that plays in the NHL today is the second incarnation of the Ottawa club. The original Ottawa Senators, however, were around not only during the NHL's infancy, but also long before the NHL was even established. Founded by a small group of like-minded hockey enthusiasts in March of 1883, the Ottawa Hockey Club, as it was then called, became the first organized ice hockey club in not only Ottawa, but also Ontario. The club first participated competitively in 1884 and again in 1885 at the Montreal Winter Carnival's Ice Hockey Tournament, considered the Canadian Championship of the time, with future Ottawa Mayor Nelson Porter netting the club's first ever goal. Ottawa would never have much success at the Winter Carnival, but on December 8, 1886, they would find a new stage by joining the newly formed Amateur Hockey Association of Canada, the first ever championship league. In their first season with the association in 1887, Ottawa would only play in one challenge match before they were forced to suspend activity due to ice rink facilities being at a shortage. This period of inactivity would last until the opening of the Rideau Skating Rink, followed by the hockey club affiliating with the Ottawa Amateur Athletic Club in 1889. When they returned to the ice for the 1889-90 season, they would play in only two competitive games. But in the following season, that number would jump to 14 games as they participated in three different leagues. The newly formed Ottawa City Hockey League, the Ontario Hockey Association, and the Amateur Hockey Association of Canada. Over the next eight seasons, Ottawa would collect three OHA championships before resigning from the association in 1894, and capture the AHAC title for a couple of months in the 1891-92 season until the Montreal Hockey Club reclaimed it from them. Following the dissolution of the AHAC in 1898, Ottawa would join the remnants of the former association in the new Canadian Amateur Hockey League. It would be while a part of this new league that Ottawa would become the original Stanley Cup dynasty. This first golden era for the club began and ended with forward Frank McGee. McGee joined the club in 1903, despite already losing an eye playing local amateur hockey, thus running the risk of permanent blindness by continuing to play, and would go on to score 135 goals in the 45 games he played with Ottawa. With McGee's impressive goal-scoring ability leading the way, Ottawa finished the 1903 CAHL season tied for first place with the Montreal Victorias. To settle things, the two clubs faced off in a two-game total goal series with the league title and Stanley Cup on the line. The first game was played in Montreal, with temperatures that made the ice surface somewhat slushy. These poor ice conditions made it a desperate struggle to score, and the game ended in a 1-1 to -1 tie. The return match in Ottawa also provided less than desirable conditions, as the teams took to ice coated with an inch of water. These conditions, however, did not hinder Ottawa, as they crushed Montreal 8-0, with McGee scoring three goals, and the other five shared among the three Gilmore brothers, Dave, Suddy, and Bill. This win started a period in which the team held the Stanley Cup and defeated all challengers until 1906. For their first Stanley Cup win against Montreal, each of the team's players was given a silver nugget by team executive Bob Shillington. Years later during an interview, forward Harry Westwick recalled that at the presentation, one of the players said, we ought to call ourselves the Silver Seven, and the name caught on right there. During their three-year dynasty, the Silver Seven resigned from the CAHL in February of 1904 over a dispute regarding the replaying of a game, and for the remainder of that winter played an only cup challenge series since they were independent of any league. The next year, they joined the Federal Amateur Hockey League, winning the league title and retaining the cup. However, the very next year, Ottawa hopped leagues once again, leaving the FAHL with the Montreal Wanderers and joining up with several teams from the now dissolved CAHL to form the Eastern Canada Amateur Hockey Association in 1906. 
It was in March of that year that Ottawa's cup streak would end thanks to the Montreal Wanderers' Lester Patrick, who scored the two goals that put Montreal on top of Ottawa in their playoff series for the ECAHA crown, and by extension, the Stanley Cup. This would begin a fierce rivalry between Ottawa and the Wanderers that would span the next six years. As with the exception of the two months the Kenora Thistles held the Cup in 1907, between 1906 and 1911, the Stanley Cup would only pass between these two dominant clubs. During this era, Ottawa would not only hold the Stanley Cup from March of 1909 to March of 1910, and again from March of 1911 to March of 1912, but also join the Canadian Hockey Association following the dissolution of the ECHA in 1909, and then join the National Hockey Association when the CHA failed after only a few weeks of play. It is during their time in the NHA that the nickname Ottawa Senators came into common usage. Although there had been a competing Senators club in 1909, and there had been mentions of the Senators nickname as early as 1901, the nickname was not adopted by the club. Instead, the official team name of the Ottawa Hockey Club remained in place until ownership changes in the 1930s. Between the 1911-1912 and 1913-1914 seasons, the club's success would decline, with the only real bright spot for Ottawa being the debut of right-winger Punch Broadman, who scored 20 goals in 18 games. In the 1914-1915 season, Ottawa would experience a resurgence, thanks to their new starting goaltender Clint Benedict and the acquisition of former Montreal Wanderer Art Ross. This year, the club tied the Wanderers for first in the league, and then beat the Montreal club 4-1 over a two-game playoff series for the NHA league title. After their victory over Montreal, the Ottawa club headed west to play the Vancouver Millionaires of the Pacific Coast Hockey Association in the first official Stanley Cup Championship Series between the two leagues. Unfortunately for Ottawa, Cyclone Taylor, one of their club's former star players, netted six goals in three games for Vancouver, and the Millionaires defeated Ottawa in three straight games to claim the 1915 Stanley Cup. In the 1915-1916 season, Ottawa would lose star winger Punch Broadbent, who left to fight in World War I, but in his place they acquired Frank Niver, who had been the second leading scorer on the Vancouver Millionaires during the previous year's Stanley Cup match. However, despite Niver's addition and Clint Benedict leading the league in goaltending categories, Ottawa had to settle for a second place finish behind the Montreal Canadiens in the NHA standings. With the war going on, gate receipts had declined to the point that during the offseason, the club's president proposed to suspend the team's operations until the war was over. However, instead of suspending the team, Ottawa's directors handed things over to the owner of the team's home arena, Ted Day. Day then cut the players' salaries and even started letting some go. Additionally, he fired the team's manager, Alf Smith, to save another $750 that would have constituted Smith's salary. In the 1916-1917 season, the NHA split its schedule into two halves of 10 games each. Ottawa would finish in second place during the first half, but then win the second half of the league's split schedule. This set them up to play a two-game playoff series for the league crown against the season's first half winner, the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal was the victor in Game 1, winning by a 5-2 score, but Ottawa rebounded with a 4-2 win in Game 2. However, the series win went to Montreal, since they outscored Ottawa 7-6 over the two-game series, giving the Canadians a ticket to play for the Cup and putting an end to Ottawa's year. Following this season, tensions in the NHA's boardroom, caused by Toronto's owner Eddie Livingston, would cause the other club owners to suspend the NHA's operations and form a new league of their own. So, for the 1917-1918 season, Ottawa once again found itself playing in a new league, the NHL.